As America grapples with its difficult history, an article in Esquire argues that the new civil rights movement we're watching unfold was inevitable. Rich Benjamin writes, a toxic brew of negligence, corporate favoritism, racist double standards on attributing blame, and Republican intransigence left the country with unequal outcomes defined by class and race. People had no option but to get out in the street and protest. Joining me now is Rich Benjamin. He is an author, columnist, and political analyst, also the author of Searching for Whitetopia, an improbable journey into the heart of white America. Rich, it is really great to have you. And those are really powerful Hi. words that you, were, you to wrote be here. in Esquire. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to ask you about an interesting poll, Monmouth University poll, and we'll bring it up on the screen. 76% of Americans, including 71% of white people, called racism and discrimination a big problem in the United States. 57% of Americans believe the anger that led to these protests is fully justified. What do you make of that poll? I'm encouraged and inspired by that poll, and I think the death of George Floyd, I think the results of the COVID pandemic helped push the needle in, in those favor, because you have to remember, just uh, two years ago, the majority of white Americans were saying that reverse racism against whites was a bigger problem than racism against black. And also, the mentality used to be that it was just a few bad apples, it was just a few bad cops. But now, as that poll suggests, people understand the systemic nature of this problem. And it's not just this one-off thing where that poor child, Trayvon Martin, was murdered. But this is a systemic problem of brutality. It's a systemic problem of the government not responding to issues like COVID. We see these militarized police officers in the streets that have better gear than basic doctors at public hospitals. And I think people have said enough. Tell me, um, or talk to those people who don't really get it, who don't understand how it's systemic, who might say, I haven't done anything wrong, or uh, my uh, ancestors weren't here during the time of slavery. This is not my problem. I didn't do anything to make it worse. What do you say to them? I wish they would educate themselves on this country's history the way that, for example, in the 1950s, certain Americans, white Americans, were able to go to college on the GI Bill, the way that the, subs the suburbs were subsidized by all of our tax money in order that the suburbs w could be legally segregated. And the way that wealth is transferred in this country from generation to generation, everybody understands that perhaps they could inherit their house from their father or funds from their fathers. And therefore, white America in the 50s got a $200 billion head start in terms of wealth, in terms of health, in terms of general well-being and access. But the younger generation is beginning to see this, and they're beginning to see through video camera, through iPhone, the systemic abuses. And by the way, many of the white protesters who are protesting against police, whether they be young people, whether they be old people, they themselves have become the the victims of too aggressive and abusive policing. So that's what I say to them, is to look more honestly. And it's not the point of who you are as a person. We individualize things too much in this country. I did this, I didn't do that. But just to look broadly about how, how society works, broadly about how, for example, with the recovery now with COVID, the way that uh, rich people, the way that wealthy hospitals, the way that wealthy corporations are getting an undue tax break, an undue benefit in terms of recovery funds, who has connected the way that political power, the way that economic power in this country is concentrated in so few people's hands. And I think people get that. I think you make really good points in talking about the GI Bill, talking about the funding of suburbia. Also, I'd add in redlining. These are all things that have um, really led mm. and, and, uh, and contributed to the, the vast inequality that we now see in this country so many years later. Rich Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us. Your book, Whitopia, Searching for Whitopia, An Improbable Journey to the Heart of White America. Thanks very much.